man do I really enjoy games from the early 2000s. This is mostly because primarily these are the games I grew up playing on the PlayStation 2 and later the original Xbox and even the GameCube. Many of these multi-platform games and the exclusives to their respective platforms are great and are very nostalgic for me, which is maybe why I've made so many videos on this channel about how to get into hacking the original Xbox and your Wii to play games from this generation. And now while I'm maybe a little bit late to the scene, I came to realize that there is a very functional Dolphin emulator for Android. There's also a PlayStation 2 emulator for Android, but it does not run nearly as well as the much more robustly developed Dolphin emulator, which not only emulates GameCube, but also emulates Wii games, though I haven't tested that and I'm not quite sure how it entirely works since the Wii's motion games would be a bit difficult to emulate without somehow Bluetoothing up a Wii controller, which I know is a possibility, but probably not something that you want to do with your mobile phone. But nonetheless, the GameCube games do support game pads as well as on-screen button prompts, just like you'd expect from a typical emulator that you would play on a phone. Now, for the most part, my experience playing games on phones as far as emulators go is through the Game Boy Advance emulator, My Boy. So games that are much simpler to play and don't necessarily have a joystick-style input like the GameCube would have, but it blew my mind to find out just how well this would run on the right phone. If you have a flagship Android phone, say a Galaxy or a OnePlus, the newer models of course, this is going to run very well, but even some of the mid-tier phones may be able to run these games with varying success. I think the easiest way to probably get yourself up to speed is try to take a look on YouTube, type in Dolphin Emulator Android followed by the phone model you have, and maybe somebody has a gameplay example out there for you. Another great idea is to figure out what processor your phone is using. You can get this data from something like Phone Arena, which I will have linked down in the description. Find out what version of, say, a Snapdragon or a Qualcomm processor you're using. As many of these videos trialing out the Dolphin emulator actually also feature in the title what processor they're using in their phone, as this is a little bit more generic of a way to go about figuring things out. And one of the problems many people run into with trying to get the Dolphin emulator to work on their phones is that their phones simply are not fast enough to handle the robust emulation that this requires. It's something that's been beaten through on the reviews where the average rating for the Dolphin emulator actually is not nearly as high as it should be considering the fact that many of the one star reviews are coming from people that are using devices that simply are inadequate and that's something that you have to expect when you're emulating games that only came out roughly 15 years ago on home consoles now in your pocket. Also taking into account the fact that GameCube games are capped at roughly 1.4 or 1.5 gigabytes per ISO means that in a large phone like a 256 gig or a 120 gig model you can hold quite a few ISOs to bring on the go and play and unlike a typical mobile game these games offer obviously much more depth, no microtransactions, all of that sort of thing plus the added bonus of nostalgia. One of the things I was most excited to get into playing on my phone was NFL Street which I feel like actually plays pretty well into being a mobile game and while a lot of people have pushed for NFL Street obviously to come back on home consoles, since EA does not want to seem to make that bet towards doing it, maybe it would be a great opportunity to put something like this out on mobile. Same with NBA Street. I feel like these simple few button games could work well on the mobile platform as they could be slimmed down from the more complex counterparts fairly easily just because of the arcade style of the gameplay. Something to keep in mind when trying different games with Dolphin, which obviously not all games run as well as others, and you will need to mess around with the settings in order to get the most optimal performance out of your device. Now when selecting what GameCube games to play on your phone, I think it's very important for you to keep in mind what input method you're going to use. If you're planning to use the on-screen buttons like I am rather than a traditional gamepad, it will be very difficult for you to play games that require you to press multiple buttons on the same side of the screen at the same time. This is obviously because there is no sort of trigger system on your phone. You have to press the trigger button on the screen as well as maybe the A or B button on the screen at the same time, if it's on the same side of the screen, this can be very difficult. Also maneuvering the joystick and pressing the left bumper would be very difficult. So obviously you want to very carefully consider what games would be optimal to play on your phone and take some trial and error there before you go and download or copy over a whole bunch of GameCube ISOs to use on this. 
So I'm most definitely interested in seeing where this emulator goes over the next few years. The Dolphin emulator has just continued to grow and grow since it's released back in 2003. And the fact that the project has went on this long as an open source project that's available for free is truly impressive to me and something to be excited about as we move into the future and maybe seeing more and more console games emulated on portable devices. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey and I will see you in the next video.